So I'm off to take a shower, and I run into a deer family. It's one mama deer and her two little deers. Good morning and welcome to day seven. I am on Skyline Drive heading south out of Shenandoah. Heading south, you might ask, why would he be heading south when Skyline Drive goes all the way north to an interstate, which would get me to Gettysburg that much faster? Well, turns out that this morning the power went out in the campground I was staying at, and so I ended up surrendering an ungodly number of quarters to the shower before figuring out that even though the light was on in the ceiling, there was no heat and there was no water. So I had to drive a good way south to another campground which happened to have a single working shower stall. Don't ask. So now I'm clean and I've spent the equivalent of several Starbucks lattes in order to get that shower. But you know what? You can't beat clean when you're driving eight whole hours to New York City. So today's itinerary is going to be about four hours up to Gettysburg and about four hours over to New York. Let's see if I can get through here without hitting any deer. Oh dear. Supercharger with a view. So you know how West Virginia has that little tag kind of coming off the eastern side? I'm about to pass through it. So today I'll be going through West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and finally into New York. That is a lot of states. It's easy to forget how many are kind of clued together up in here. And welcome to West Virginia. West Virginia, mountain mama, take me home, country roads. And now crossing the Potomac into Maryland. We're starting to see some Civil War adjacent names all over the place. Sharpsburg, Antietam, all sorts of places I've heard about in books, but never seen for real. So this is kind of a cool trip back into history. So as I was driving down a uh, rural country road just a few minutes ago, I saw a sign that said, prepare to meet thy God. And while I'm assuming that it was just a uh, Bible verse quote of some kind designed to, uh, you know, make sure that I repent before my sins land me in a bad place, I couldn't help but interpret it as a threat. I was like, prepare to meet thy God, why? Uh, here's hoping that on this last and final pass through the mountains before I finally make it to the East Coast, I do not, in fact, meet my God. So I have yet to meet my god, but there has been a knucklehead tailgating me down this steep, windy road for the last couple miles. So if there is such a thing as an avenging angel, uh, I'm pretty sure that's it. And I've made it to Pennsylvania. My mom's from Pennsylvania, so I've been here a couple times before. Um, but never to Gettysburg. So we'll go get to see a tragic battlefield where thousands of men died on a sunny day from the comfort of a car. Feels a little off. I do think the Confederates had better hats. Emancipation Proclamation, signed by the author, General Lee's accoutrements. Forces won the fighting on the first day of battle, but Union forces held the higher ground. Partisanship never dies. So here I am, on Cemetery Ridge, amid a forest of monuments. This is where the Union took up its defense against Pickett's Charge, which sent 12,000 soldiers over those plains up toward this hill in one vast, last-ditch attempt to defeat the Union and secure independence for the South. 
It's a good thing for a lot of people that they didn't win. And here it is, the angle. This is the actual stone fence that Confederate troops have broke through. Everything is a little bit spread out up here, so I've been running quite a bit. Imagine standing up here, shooting down, and getting shot at. When they come charging up at you. California Regiment. The owner of the news from home. And yep, here it is. The high watermark of the Confederacy. I'm walking down the shady lanes that lead up to the Gettysburg National Cemetery. This is a spot where thousands of soldiers from the Civil War up till Vietnam were laid to rest. It also contains the Soldiers National Monument, a monument to U.S. soldiers from all times and places. Here are the first headstones. They have no names, only numbers. These are all the unknowns from the battle here. And here are some of the knowns. And in the center of all of it, the Soldiers National Monument. Not only is this a monument dedicated to all of America's soldiers throughout time, it also marks the site where Abraham Lincoln delivered the Gettysburg Address. God bless the USA. And there's the little round top. That's the site that anchored the Union left and which felt some of the thickest fighting of the war. Unfortunately, Little Round Top and Devil's Den are both closed right now for construction, which is really quite a shame. But... Also, I didn't buy tickets for this, but off in the distance is President Eisenhower's old farm. Cool. And here I am, on the Confederate side, looking out over that field towards Cemetery Ridge. Imagine being over here, having nothing but your guns behind you, and all that empty field in front. Imagine knowing you were basically charging into suicide. Final stop. I'm sitting in the center of Gettysburg. In the middle of the historic district, there's a roundabout that marks where all the roads at Gettysburg come together, and I'm parked right alongside it. I just stopped at the Gettysburg Chocolate Market, and they gave me this thing called a chocolate espresso, which is exactly what it claims to be. It is chocolate mixed with espresso. It's actually really good, which is not something I would expect, because normally espresso without milk and cream and all sorts of anti-bitterness agents is kind of, kind of, kind of burns. But this, this is delicious. So yeah, I'm going to go charge up at the Gettysburg Supercharger, then launch out over Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and finally into New York. And tonight we'll be stopping in New York City's Financial District. Heading out of Gettysburg. 207 miles to New York City. Now, between the fact that it's primarily downhill and things are a lot slower, the battery is going to last for four hours on this trip, which means four hours and two minutes precisely until my next scheduled stop. Oh, my butt is going to be so sore, but that's going to get me in there by eight, which gives me enough time to work out, go to bed, get up the next morning, and get started with New York City. Welcome to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. 
and the associated traffic jam. Crossing this river, we are crossing into New Jersey. Mile zero, welcome to New Jersey. Another place I've never been to, but have now. We're currently one hour and 40 minutes, according to the car, or 70 miles from our destination in downtown Manhattan. Probably gonna need one more charge between here and there. And there it is. There is the New York City skyline. Hallelujah. Like, like, uh, what are they? Like toothpicks sticking into the sky. They're all so tall and thin. Glowing against the horizon under a full moon. Gorgeous. These people drive worse than Austinites. Look at that skyline and look at that moon. Getting ready to enter the Holland Tunnel. Now let's pray to God that this easy pass works. Going underground. We are passing under the Hudson River and entering the state of New York. Let's hear it for New York. Concrete jungle, wet dream tomato. There's nothing you can't do. Broadway doesn't seem very broad. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I'm gonna be a part of it. New York, New York. So I made it to my hotel room. It's, uh, it's a little small to be trying to dry out a tent in, but I'll figure it out. So, uh, now it's time to hit the gym, go to bed, get up bright and early tomorrow morning, and off to Central Park. Before we do that, though, let's just see what kind of view I got out this window. Oh my god, it's an alleyway. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that. You can, you can just make out a crack of city lights. All right, so I'm not gonna be spending too much time in here. Tomorrow evening, I'll probably go out to eat somewhere and, you know, enjoy the city life a little bit. Also laundry, so much laundry.